This is the part that actually gets a little bit funky. Your listing's not done. It is actually far from done. In this video, let's go back to the basics. I'm gonna teach you how to create an Airbnb listing from scratch. Wildly important because when you create your Airbnb listing, it's gonna be your first shot at doing something right that can please the Airbnb algorithm and put you on the first page of search. And how you make your listing, of course, will define whether or not a guest wants to book your space. And if you have properties yourself, you're gonna wanna watch this video because your listing is probably made wrong. You're missing some things and I'm gonna help you fix that. Let's go inside. It's getting hot out here. The tips that I'm going to give you will impact you in a big way, whether this is your first listing or you wanna go back in and change some of the listings that you've already created that you might have maybe missed some details. Most hosts miss things. Even employees of mine who've been doing this for a long time tend to miss details and I had to go through and redo this training. That's where this actually came from is uh, less than a month ago, I retrained a manager on front to back listing creation and even I missed a couple of things. So Haley's like, hey, here's a couple of things we do now at scale that you need to add into our training. And so Haley and I came together to came, come up with this final training for all of our new people on how to create some listings. So what you're getting is you're getting insights from a company that has to create 30 or 40 listings at a time. This is gonna help you with duplicating listings, making sure that they're complete and thorough so you never have an issue with Airbnb or your guests on the back end. We wanna prepare the guests like through this process, as they book, they get everything that they need, if at all possible. And you can manage their expectations in your listing description and your photos. And there's all sorts of pro tips that can come from just general listing creation. It's, a, it's probably the most central part of your business because Aside from having the property, you need to have an Airbnb listing to get bookings, right? So it kind of makes sense. So let's go right from the beginning. When you're on the, you know, the become a host section of Airbnb, create a listing, you get the options to either finish a listing that you already started and it goes by date now. And this is a big thing for you guys to know. This includes when you go to duplicate a listing, it'll pop up a similar window. It's like, well, duplicate a listing that you started uh, a week ago. The reason why you are getting dates now and, and instead of being able to duplicate specific listings where they show you, hey, is is this the listing you want to duplicate because it makes it easier for hosts to just recreate a listing that has bad reviews and I think that's why Airbnb is doing this they want the duplicate feature only to really exist for when you're creating 30 of like one apartment in a building they want to make it easy for workflow they don't want to make it easy to dodge bad reviews and just abandon a listing that's doing poorly so that's why they made that change at the end of this video I'm gonna go over some expectations on how long this whole process takes by the way so this is gonna be thorough but it may not take you as long as this video so stay tuned next page of course you go through what type of property it is and then you go to the address section now when you type in the address it'll give you this confirmation is the pin in the right spot if you're duplicating a listing it'll just skip to this now when you're on this page is the pin on the right spot you need to hit the back button to enter in finer points about the address if you duplicate a listing and you're doing apartment one two or three this is the point where you hit the back button and change the apartment from number one to number two now some things when you duplicate a listing stick and some things have to be done fresh this section where you choose the amenities that you have this is the stuff that sticks so if all of your apartments have the same amenities when you duplicate this will all be there creating the listing the first time is the most tedious next you upload some photos and so the pro tip for uploading photos here is you are going to want to have folders of photos not just for each apartment if you do apartments like me but you'll also want to have a photo for like shared stuff so when we do photos say 30 or 40 apartments let's say we only have five or six apartments we can take photos of on day one because we're going through them all. What we'll do is we'll make little template folders. So we'll have a folder that has all of our best coffee station photos, the amenities like the pool, the gym, and stuff like that. And that'll just be one photo. And then as a photographer goes through and takes photos of each apartment, we'll only need some leftover photos. And sometimes we'll have a good enough photo of the bathroom. Like there might be only two floor plans, for like a bathrooms in an apartment complex of 40. So we only need two bathroom shots. So now we have our bathroom A and bathroom B. If you do 40 apartments and you only have four floor plans for bedrooms, you can start to do you know bedroom a b c and d and you can actually create a tree of folders and as you go to create listings all somebody has to do is when they finish staging they just have to tell you what living room shot what like bedroom shot what bathroom shot you need and so you can stage 40 apartments but only take maybe six or eight apartments worth of photos so we use a folder system for that you'll need at least eight photos on here for airbnb to give you real relevance in seo it says upload five but you want to upload at least eight like i said we've got this best pots coffee pool gym photo for this b-class property where our photographer the one that we hired was just a real estate guy he wasn't good at this and he forgot to take coffee station photos 
and pots and pans photos like the right way. So we had to go back and just kind of like do a photo shoot with the stuff that every unit had. And then we have one folder where we now inject all the coffee station and pots and pans photos into all of the apartments because he missed them in the mall. This actually leads to a potential pro tip. If you don't know what photo to put up as your hero photo, which is the first photo, if your listing has a pool, that's a good first starting point as you then decide to make your mind up later. And how you make your mind up later is you're gonna go look at your competition and see what other photos your competitors have up. You want something that contrasts against theirs. You want to stand out. Now, Airbnb, their old algorithm used to push water shots. Like one out of three photos on the homepage had water in it. So it's a great safe place to start until you can go and look at your competition and see what they're doing. My one pro tip for creating a listing title is get a king bed for your place and then write that it has a king bed at the very beginning of your title. The reason why is Airbnb still doesn't have a search parameter for king bed. The only way that somebody will know that you have a king bed is if you say so. And so the first two words, king bed, and that'll help you get more clicks, which is nice. Now at the point that you start to create description, you'll notice that on the left here, I have a note on this MacBook. I'm not gonna give you all of my notes, by the way, but I'm gonna give you like a peek into this note that I use. When I create a first listing, let's say I'm making 40 listings, or let's say when I create a listing even for just a house, that house will have a folder of photos, it'll have a readme file, and that goes into Google Drive. And this note that I have here would be one of the files that goes into Google Drive. This note is gonna be everything that I write for the listing. So if we ever recreate the listing, I have all the copyright in a note file. But if I'm creating 40 apartments, now I have all the copyright for all 40 in a note file, so I can just copy and paste. So here in the description, I would copy and paste the description, and as we move forward, any other text boxes I have copy and paste for. That's why creating the first listing takes so long and everything else is super fast. After that, you're gonna set your price, but the one thing that I wanna point out here is at the bottom it says offer a 20% discount for your first three guests. You're not going to do that. Instead of giving 20% off on all of your first three reservations, which could go four weeks or six weeks in advance, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna drop your prices for today tomorrow or the next day and you're gonna have this tapered pricing system where in this example we're going like 50 60 75 90 100 or 99 bucks and 105 you're gonna have this rank like this ramp and by doing this your first three bookings should be to today tomorrow next week instead of three weeks from now five weeks from now because the reason why we're dropping price is so that we can get fast reviews this 20 percent off is just too widely distributed to guarantee that your first three bookings are going to be today tomorrow or the next day now you can combine both if you want you can do 20 percent off and drop your rates for today tomorrow or the next day and just inflate your rates for the next three weeks until you get the first three bookings you could do that that's a, a manipulation and so you can get best of both worlds but instead of playing with this and like tooling with it at scale we just have our own like we just abandon it and reprice our listings uh, like without use of this new listing boost thing but you can do both with one listing it's not that hard warning do not put security cameras in your home and even security cameras in the front we actually have a host in our community that got banned because he discovered a party through his ring doorbell camera and that was enough to get his listing banned under investigation for the party. You don't want to discover parties through a camera system because that's surveillance that you have to do a really good job of describing. But the minute system, the noise system that I actually promote quite frequently, um, minute.com, M-I-N-U-T.com. And there's a discount code, you get 20% off, Sean, S-E-A-N-2-0, you get 20% off of infinite number of devices. This doesn't survey, it just monitors noise levels like a baby monitor. And by using this to discover parties, you're never in violation of Airbnb terms of service or not at risk of. If cameras are involved, Airbnb assumes that there could be a liability, so they'll shut your listing down for an investigation if you're using cameras, even if you properly disclose them. Don't use security cameras, use the minute system. It's much more safe and you won't have your listing deleted. At this point, you're ready to publish your listing um, and move on. This is the part that actually gets a little bit funky. Your listing's not done. It is actually far from done. You have to go back in to your Airbnb listing roster. And what's cool about Airbnb's listing roster is it'll list the most recent listing that you created at the very, very top. So here, um, we modified it today so it comes right up to the top. You don't have to search for it. Well, when you do create your listing, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you do to finish your listing. Now, I'm not gonna teach you everything internal because some of the stuff that we do for our listings is actually kind of secret at scale, but I'm gonna give you some, some tips for creating your listing on the back end. And I promise you, I'm teaching you more than any other person on the internet who probably is willing to teach you for free. So give this video a like for the free that I can give you. When you go back to modify your listing description, it's gonna pop up three more boxes and you need to fill all these out. This include the 
space, guest access, other things to note. Other things to note is important if your listing is a little bit older or has stairs or there's a potential for noise, things like that. Write it in there as a preventative measure. Don't oversell your listing and avoid the things that people may not like about your property. Just to embrace it and go for it. The next part when you go to pricing, you're going to modify not only your nightly rate if you want to modify it, but the first thing you need to do is add a weekend price and add your cleaning fee. Once those are in, you then add your discounts. Now, what you want to set as a weekly discount or as a monthly discount is up to you. Once your base price and your weekend price are listed, you go back in and adjust your monthly discount and that will tell you what the final price of your monthly rate is going to be. Now, here's another pro tip too. Let's say you use Wheelhouse. I'm an advisor for Wheelhouse. We talk and they make changes to their software and they're doing great things right now. So I advise that you use Wheelhouse instead of Price Labs or Beyond Pricing. And um, I'll have a link in the description for Wheelhouse if you want to use a pricing software. If Wheelhouse suggests a different base price than the current base prices in your listing and they modify your base price from say 90 bucks to 120 or something, you want to go back in and adjust your base price on Airbnb to 120. The reason why is when you go to change your monthly discount and you want to make sure that that final monthly discount is going to be the right price, you want to know what Wheelhouse is actually going to make your price. So by putting that in the Airbnb going, okay, my Wheelhouse prices look like they're going to be X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to put that into Airbnb. And then when I go to change my monthly rate and do a discount of 35 or 40%, it'll say your monthly price now will be $3,000. You want to know what that monthly discount is going to be because part of your slow season strategy is to get monthly bookings. And I've got more videos on pricing strategy, obviously, on this YouTube channel. We do three day and four day discounts, which require you to have pro tools with the multi calendar. Just go to airbnb.com forward slash multi calendar and it will load that stuff for you. Why we use three days and four days discounts and our strategy for pricing strategy around those. That's something I don't teach for free. Um, I have this rule sets based hybrid pricing model that's really robust and aggressive and we stay over 90% occupied all the time. And this is something I teach inside of Cracking Superhost. It might be one of the most important things for you to know. Even if you use Wheelhouse, we still run our own pricing strategies and Wheelhouse is built off of what I'm showing you right now. So don't think that Price Labs or Wheelhouse is going to solve your problems. It's just going to facilitate more of maybe slightly better improvements. Otherwise, it's just going to facilitate more of the same. If you don't know how to use Wheelhouse to optimize your pricing strategy, it'll give you some insights, but it may not run the whole show for you until you're you know, until you know what you're doing. So if you want to learn why we use three day and four day discounts and how we implement this in our overall pricing strategy on 150 listings, join Cracking Superhost because until July of, the, of 2023, I'm still doing the coaching. Every single week, I'll coach for four hours on Zoom. And any question you have under the sun, I'll tell you. The reason why I'm going to no longer coach directly every week in Cracking Superhost in July is I'm building a mastermind where a lot of my students are making more than a million a year and I need to spend more time on them. And they're going to pay me more, of course, because they're making millions a year, but I'm going to really more small group with them after July. Add your fees first and then your discounts second was the, was the whole point of that one really. Next, your cancellation policy should be set at strict, but people don't tend to know that and know why. And Airbnb sets you to flexible by default. You can change the parameters of your instant book. We have a pre-booking message that we use. I actually have a previous YouTube video on our pre-booking message. Go find that. It's actually really important for party prevention. Then you set your check-in windows. That's important. Then you set your house rules. Now, your house rules can be whether or not you're party friendly, pet friendly, kid friendly, blah, blah, blah. We choose to either be child friendly if our furniture is minimalist and safe or we choose to be pet friendly if we can't really compete with our competition right if we just if our listings aren't good enough to compete with competition we'll do stuff like this as a means to get more bookings or more views where pound for pound our listing is just a cheaper or more economic option and we want to get more views so you're going to set your house rules based on your comfort level and then there's going to be something called additional rules we have a big long additional rules contract that's very similar to our verbo house rules contract and we put that in there as well last thing that you're going to go through unless you add a co-host that would be the very last thing but the last thing is you're going to go to your pre-booking details some of this pre-populates because you did it in the other page but you need to add like interactions with guests we say that we're not going to be available for guests. We say we don't have any interaction, but we clarify the hours of our customer service staff here. And that's something that Haley is like, hey, you should add that in. Then also there's going to be a house manual. Um, when a guest gets their emails to check in, this house manual will give them a bunch of stuff. Now we have a big template house manual. We have a big template house rules. We have all this. Now we have to go in. If there's no pool at a property, we have to remove the pool instructions or the pool hours. If there's no gym, we remove the gym instructions. If we're pet friendly or not, we, we kind of 
pull in and add in, well, pull out and add in other language in our house rules. If you want a copy of my house rules, if you want a copy of all my listing copy, like you want to see everything that we do, that's also in Cracking Super Host. Now, the cool thing about this is when you get good at this, creating a listing, I can do it in 12 minutes. I just hired a new gentleman named Eric, who's actually part of Cracking Super Host, and he came to Dallas to work with me, and I taught him how to create listings. The first one he did probably took him more than 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. And then over time, he did 20, and I think his fastest right now is 16 minutes. He did a listing in 16 minutes after doing like five or six of them. So the cool thing about this, and if you want to talk about scale and workflow, is if you create tons of the same listings or you have somebody within your company that specializes in creating listings, that person becoming an expert on listing creation not only makes the workflow faster, but they'll make less mistakes. This touches a lot of stuff that we didn't just talk about. We didn't talk about what photos exactly you should take and what order to put them in. That's an extremely important topic too. We didn't talk about how to set your base price. That's an important topic too. We didn't talk about why strict rule set or strict cancellation policy is important over flexible. Um, we didn't talk about a lot of these things. Now, I do have videos on this YouTube channel because I've taught for free for five years that brush on all these topics. And of course, I do direct coaching, like I said. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Uh, you hosts who already have listings, if you have any other insights to share, because I did just breeze over a 101 on listing creation, feel free to put it in the comments. Let's make this an educational resource for the whole world. It shouldn't be any skin off of anybody's back to know how to create their Airbnb listing. Right guys? Thank you so much for watching this. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.